All right, guys, welcome to the uh, Tip Top webinar. For those who don't know, my name is John Goodman, and no, I am not the actor. Um, so I, uh, I'm, I'm very excited to be on this webinar and share some tips with you guys and um, kind of share my story with you. But first, I'm going to read the disclosure because we have to. Um, so this trade is for educational purposes only. All information given is speculative and involves risk. This trade should be examined and taken from a personal evaluation. All attendees agree by watching that any trades he or she takes was of individual influence based on the personal valuation of the market. This webinar intention is to demonstrate a method that can be used to help make any evaluation of the current market. No past, present, or future incomes have been made or relied upon prior to or during this meeting. So disclosure done. I know we got to read that. But uh, OK, so going along this webinar, please type in any questions you might have. And I'll get to them as soon as possible. And, and my first thing is I want to share a quick version of my story so you can learn a little bit about me. I know that uh, Paul's been doing a webinar and Phil did the last one and me. And I want to give us for those who don't know me, I want to share a little bit about my story. So, you know, so I started trading at the age of 23 in the pits of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and I'm 48. So I've been trading for 25 years now. And after pit trading went to the computers, I left the trading floor and I started trading stock options. And I did that for seven years, but it became really hard to make money with all the regulations going on. So I got out of trading for about two years and I was doing promotional products, which I, I didn't really love that much, but I, really, I needed to find something to do. But my passion was always trading. I love the fact that I can own my own life and that I get to bet on myself. And that's what I miss most about trading. And I was looking at all kinds of trading systems and indicators, but nothing I really saw gave me that trading edge like I had in the pit in Chicago. So then one day my sister came upon this trading webinar and said, you might want to check this out. And I watched the webinar and I was floored because I finally found the edge that I was looking for with these indicators, with the major miners and the pressure that really, really excited me. So I did the trial and signed up for seven, after seven days. And it was the best uh, move that I could ever make. And you know who signed me up for those guys who, uh, who uh, know Phil? Phil actually took me through the trial about two years ago. And I remember, I love telling the story about Phil. I remember that I said, this guy, Phil, is either the biggest BSer I've ever met in my entire life or just the greatest guy of all time. And he turned out to be such a great guy and we became really good friends. And Whatever Phil tells you, it's true. He's never lied once. He's always been a straight up shooter. And he's been a mentor to me during this, uh, during the time that I've been here. So I, I really appreciate Phil. So I gotta give Phil a little shout out. So, so no trader is alike. Everyone is different. And my advice to you, when you get on these webinars or if you're doing coaching or whatever it is, to take some nuggets from everybody that you learn from. Um, this will help you eventually come up with your trading strategy and your trading rules that best suits you. And we're all, uh, we're, I've taken them from all different people. Um, I, I've taken them from Phil. I've taken them from my coach. I've taken from, you know, some other traders. I've actually, I've taken some from Paul. And it's really helped me develop my trading strategy and, tr and trading rules that work for me. Okay, so I want to, I, I want there's two parts of becoming a successful trader. It's the indicators and trading psychology. So during my webinars, I'll be talking, you know, about trading psychology. Um, maybe not this one so much, but along the way, tips that can help you. Because trading psychology is like 
God, I'm big into fitness. So nutrition is 80% of your sex. That's success in, in, uh, in working out is 20%. Okay. So you gotta, with, with, uh, Trading psychology is 80% and the indicators are 20. So you need both though. You need both to be, you need the nutrition and the exercising to have the body that you want or the goals you want to reach with your, your uh, fitness. And then with trading, you need the trading psychology, the mindset, and you need the uh, indicators to be successful. So you need both. So there's two parts of that. So, Next, um, I'm going to take you through my trading day. Um, we'll see if there's any trading setups that, that fit my strategy. If not, I'm not going to, I'll do some back testing and show you what, what trades I look for um, to show you exactly what I look for on my setup because I don't want to just take a trade to take a trade, okay? Because I don't, if I don't see it, um, if I don't see a setup, I'm not going to just take it because that won't do you any good. Why would I take a trade that doesn't fit my trading strategy? So, okay, so a little bit about my my stuff, and we'll get to the indicators, and I just want to get through this webinar. I want to just kind of share with you what I do and take you along with my day. So my day starts at 5.15 when I get up and I work out for an hour to get just get my mind right. So 6.15, that where this is all central time. So 6.15, I uh, I work out from 5.15 to 6.15 central. Shower up, eat breakfast, get to my office, which is about 10 minutes at seven o'clock. And, and then I do about 10 minutes of uh, just meditation, getting my mind right thinking about what I got to do right, following my trading strategy, following my rules, and making sure I'm really set and ready to go um, mentally. Because again, if you're not set mentally, this is going to be a, a hard, it's going to be hard to trade. You're going to have an uphill battle um, really trying to stay focused and not, you know, going against your trading strategy or your, or your trading rules. So after that, Every single day, I read my trading mission, and this is my mission. I have a passion for becoming a successful trader. will commit myself to being the best trader I can be by always learning and being teachable. My goal as an online trader is to be disciplined, patient, and have good money management. By sticking to my game plan, I will accomplish financial and time freedom and achieve all my goals and dreams for me and my family by being a successful trader. So I want to know my mission beforehand. I want to know exactly what, you know, what I'm focused on, why I'm doing this. And, you know, it keeps me really focused on, uh, on my trading. And then I go to my trading rules. And these are my rules, okay? Everyone's going to have their own rules. We know that. Like I said before, no trader is alike. Everybody's different. So I will, and look at this, focus on the money. And focus on the process, not the money. Because if you focus on the process, you follow the indicators like you're taught, you keep learning and the money will come. But if you're chasing the money, it's very hard to become successful. So just focus on the process and the money will come. Going back to a nutrition, you know, if you focus on losing a hundred pounds in a week, you're not gonna do it, you're just gonna quit. But if you focus on doing the things that you gotta do right, then you'll start to lose weight. Just like that, you focus on the process, not the money, right in front. So first thing I do is I check uh, announcements in the Forex factory. Um, for those, let's see, right here, Forex factory. There was a bunch of stuff today. Um, for the, they had uh, unemployment, usually unemployment's uh, the Friday, of the first and the first Friday, the first of the month, but since tomorrow's a holiday, they did it today, and the market moved pretty good on that um, on uh, on those announcements. And for me, like some people still trade. Tomorrow's a holiday; banks are closed. I just when I was in the pit, I never traded on a holiday, so I don't trade tomorrow because um, of because it's probably going to be really choppy. But some people again do. 
and going back to my trading rules. So number two is I don't trade red folder announcements right here. Any of these red folders. I just don't, you know, the, I want to let the market catch up um, and not kind of guessing which way it's going to go because I don't know uh, which way. I like to have the indicator settle down beforehand so I don't trade red folder announcements. I wait for your exact setup. Don't deviate. I mean, I have a whole plan that I look at and and, and I just try and stick to it because I know I back tested so much that I know if I stick to it, um, that that it will be successful. Do not move my stops. I was having a problem moving my stops early and it was costing me. Um, so I have that red, do not move stops. And I don't double down. Now, a lot of people like, I just use a stop and I'm out and I move to the next trade. A lot of people like to hedge. I know Paul likes to hedge and, and, and average and he's really good at it. Um, it's just something I choose not to do. Um, and you know, it's just, I've gotten myself into trouble doubling down. But like I said, some people are really good at it. I know somebody who's in this business who's, who's double averaged and it's worked out for like 98% of the time. But for me, I don't, I don't do it. Number six, stay calm after a losing trade. Don't go on tilt. That can happen really easy after a losing trade if you want to get that money back quickly. And it's in my 25 years, I know that that happens. And I just want to share that with other people that, you know, if you have to shut down for ten, for for five minutes, if you have a couple losing trades, um, go take a walk and come back. But Or if you can stay calm after a losing trade, then great. Um, no more than two trades at a time. I just don't want to um, have my margin. It's, it's more really hard to focus on more than two trades for me. So I just like to do no more than two trades at one time. Plus, it starts to take your margin down, and then you have to lower your lot size compared to that. So number eight is once you shut down, for once I shut down, I'm done trading for the day. For me, once I shut down, I know in the past, and then I pull it back up, and then you know I might lose money. So for me, I just put a rule that once I shut down for the day, that's the morning session. If I trade at night, then that's a whole different session. And then I journal my trading day in a notebook. Just I do July second, two thousand twenty. How my day was. You know, was I frustrated? How was I feeling? Did I was I up uh, money and then gave it back? Um, you know. How did I have something bothering me before I got into trading? If things been going wrong where I couldn't, you know, when, when I've been moving my stop a lot before. And, and I have about, I have about, I started doing this about a year and a half ago. And I, I mean, I have some crazy stuff in there from just, from just how much I've learned, um, you know, to this time. So it's great to go back and watch that. And then three, for me, three losing trades in a row and I'm done for the day because I just feel like I don't have it and it's just time to pack it in and I'll take and I'll take the, and I'll take it if I have three losing trades it just wasn't my day and uh, that's it I mean I'll just uh, you know the markets open later on tonight or you know or I'll just come back tomorrow so that's my trading rules um, let's see what else I got trading this in. and here's my trading plan. So I have it all written down. It's a simple trading plan. Um, most of my stuff is major miners. I'm, I look at pressure first, and I'll go talk about that um, on the bottom. But most of my stuff that I'm looking for is pressure in the same right direction and major miners agreeing or miners pulling away. And then I'll wait for my five-minute setup. The only time I don't wait for a five-minute setup is if I see that pressure straight down um, if I see that pressure straight down and the major and minors are laying on top of each other, I may not get this five minute, um, this five minute in my favor. And usually I like, I like to trade a lot of stuff, you know, if it's oversold or overbought and then the five minute comes back up and I'll show you that like back up to overbought. So that's my, my, uh, one strategy there. And then I have a few strategies that I check. 
um, 60 minute with the 60 minute charts with about five minutes left in the hour. Um, the orange snap snap trade um, 8 to 92. Some of you guys probably learned that in the light. The uh, pressure trade, it's called uh, we call it clean pressure. You might have learned that in the light also. Um, and, Actually, that's the dirty pressure when, when uh, green posts on bottom and top and point in the same direction. My clean pressure, I'll show you. That's on the 60-minute uh, chart that I have when I pull up my charts. Then I look at the 10-point trade, the head fake and hydra, and, and double confirmation. I'll show you some of those other trades. I don't follow the, these trades that much, only on the 60-minute if it happens. But uh, We'll go maybe in a few next webinar. I'll go over those. Right now, I'm just going to go over uh, my my uh, my major minor or uh, agreeing or or minors pulling away. So the first thing I'll do is I'll I'll check the pressure. So I check the pressure of the trades. I mean, I love right now. Um, Let's see again. So, and again, I only trade three. I only trade three uh, pairs. I used to trade so many of them, but I just couldn't. It was just too much for me to focus. And I was, I was just, I felt myself, you know, losing good trades because I was all over the place. So I narrowed it down to uh, the Euro USD, GBP USD, GBP USD, and USD. Uh, J J P Y, um, and I'm looking for for pressure to be. So here, I love this. Now, now uh, I love when I look at pressure first, and pressures greens on bottom and pointed down. And as you can see, the 240 is laying straight. So there's some room to go on that. The miners are pulling up on the on the one day. Um, and the uh, and the majors are pulling down. Um, 120's got green on bottom and still pointing down. There's no converging even happening. The 60 is really good right here. Um, what I and in the in the, uh, the, the uh, majors are under the minors and the, and the greens down and not not converging yet. Um, kind of kind of laying straight. Green did go on top on, on the 30, but I like how these these miners are down. If I were going to take this trade, I would probably now wait till uh, till uh, these go overbought. And one of my in one of my uh, let's see. So then I checked the miners, major miners, and, and like I said, these are good. Uh, um, these are these are. This is a good setup for me with the major miners. And then I checked the TNTs. I, I really like the orange value stuff more. I checked the TNTs to see they're going. They're kind of sideways here. Um, you got green, uh, blue going down on the, on the uh, thick blue, uh, the blue going down, so that's up. Um, but these are kind of sideways in that way, which I'm all right with. I, I really pay more attention to the uh, major miners. And I love this clean pressure right here. This is my, I don't know if you guys you guys can see this, but I love this chart. Um, I love this right here to use this, these, uh, this pressure lines off of the, the, most of the times you can see it, it kind of bounces off here. So if I was going to ride something, if I was going to look to get short, I would, I would maybe wait up to, to get to 60. If it did, it may not get up there. But I usually like to maybe I'll put my stop up there. So when when I'm determining my my take profit and stop loss, I usually just eyeball it, eyeball that stuff. Like I'll I'll see right here. Maybe I could get to 28. Maybe we'll retrace this candle. Um, but I do most of my stuff on the MetaTrader, and I just it's too many lines for me. So I'll probably if I was going to take a sell here. I would probably have my stop loss above the this red and green line on the pressure right right here. Um, and then I would probably take my take profit maybe to retrace this as long as all these these uh, the pressure is down still and the major and minors are down, I would definitely still 
take that. So um, I wait for my five minute trigger. So here's the thing with me is that a lot of you can you can you can do these um, indicators. You can trade these indicators reactively or predictively. You know, reactively is a 10 point trade where everything's in your favor. Um, I like to trade them predictively and I got four setups that I like to do. And I'm just gonna pull them over because right now I don't see a trade that that uh, that yet because I'm not, I like to have this five minute um, overbought and then take that trade. Um, so here, here's kind of what I look at, um, and as if you can see, here's the setup right here. And let me know if you have any questions with this, these setups. I'm going to show you um, four setups that I take. Um, so I take, if you can see, all these pressure pointing up, pressure pointing up, pressure pointing up, green pointing up, green pointing up. You know, the, the green is ahead. I love that when the green dagger is ahead, like the green line is ahead. Um, uh, majors pulling up, minors pulling down. So this is perfect. Now I'm just waiting for this to uh, to to stay oversold. So it will be two candles. One candle, it will be uh, oversold for one candle. It's usually straight lines. And then I call this the stag because it kind of looks like a deer head. The minors pulling up and the majors pulling down, and then I'll take this trade right here. And I usually take this for uh, five pips up um, or 10 if I can get it, usually five, and then I'll have my stop. Probably, I like to keep my stop between 12 and 15 on this trade, on these trades. So, it, or I use the, the clean pressure, like I said, for that. Um, and this, and this, so this was a winner, and this is perfect. Again, I'm making it predictive. I'm predicting by back testing that these are going to turn around and go up because of the 30, 60, 120, 240. Okay, that's one. Another one is the is called the bootleg one, where I see all the pressure, pressure up, pressure up, uh, majors on top of minors, majors on top of minors. Um, see a lot of my stuff is overbought or oversold when I take it. And now this is called the bootleg, where the minors are pulling down and the majors are pointing up. And then I'll take this trade. So that's my second five minute, uh, that's my second five minute setup for that trade. And again, I take my, um, I take my trades for uh, anywhere from, I like to trade anywhere from five to 20 pips. But I don't like to have a stop loss of more than 10 to 15 because that's mine. Again, people have different stuff. I like to keep mine kind of tight. So this is the bootleg. That's my second um, five-minute uh, entry. And then I like to have the uh, green majors and gray majors scale. So there's a scale. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's 91 for the green and 160 for the gray. And the most it goes up to is 160 for the major minors and 100 for uh, the uh, majors. And then on the downside, it goes down to a zero or negative 160. And I like to wait for this to be over 20, over, over 80 on, on a cell, and then 160 tapped out for the minors and then i'll take it the other way because look major pressure down pressure down pressure down you know green just popped on bottom and and this is pretty strict strong still have uh, one day down so this is a good setup for me i'll wait and then i'll take this uh if this is posts at the end and i'll take it that's that one and my last one i take is double confirmation uh, I call it. Um, this one, actually, I like it when it's double confirmation up, and this is usually it, ha it sometimes happened. And but this one is, I think I get the wrong double confirmation. But I usually like it when it's up. Um, but when the stuff is pointing like this, down, 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 like that, I'm taking, I'm jumping on this trade no matter what. 
So sometimes it's just like uh, um, you see it. The green is way out in front, way out in front, way out in front, and the pressure steep and, and starting to converge. And this let me go with 240. So I'm all over that um, that type of stuff. So sometimes I just don't wait for the five minute to uh, for the five minutes to set up. But I do feel like when I get I get my best grades when I when I use the five minute as a setup. Um, do you set, how do you set the scales? Let me go over that. So setting the scales, um, you go to you go to studies. And I believe it's number uh, it's thirteen for the for the minor. So you go to thirteen. So you go thirteen on your you go. Let's start over. You go right click studies. Click number thirteen. Now make sure it's ID thirteen. Click on it. And you just uh, let me see if that's right. I haven't done it. It might be twelve. Or no, it's thirteen. And and you and that's how you, you put it on. Um, hold on one second. I haven't done this in a while. I just want to make sure I get it for you. Let's try. Yep. So you click on uh, you click on studies number thirteen, and then you click the value uh, label, and you can put it anywhere you want it. Really, uh, you can put it on the left edge, left right, um, on there, and then you click apply, and then for the major, the green one is right here, and then you click. Is number 15, sorry. ID 15, click on that, value label. Now it's right there. Got that? Anyone? All right, any other questions? Uh, okay, great. Any other questions that anyone has that I could answer? We got a few more minutes. No, I'll probably deep dive. I'll I'll dig in. Um, you know, you, you, you kind of go quick on these to try and get everything in. I wanted to share my day, but hopefully next time we'll be able to take a trade. I just again, I don't like to tr take trades that just to take them because I don't think it would do you any good. That's just how I. I go, but at least I can give you some nuggets that you can maybe take away and use for uh, and help you with your trading in that way. So before before I go, I just want to uh, I want to say that uh, you got to do this with trading. If you want to be great, you you could be an amateur or you could be a professional. But you got to work on yourself. So every day. It could be if I have a few hours, I spend a few hours, or it could be 15 minutes on, on each. But what I do is that you got to learn, you got to grow, and you got to practice. It's so important. Okay. So, growing, read, read, read uh, trading books, read psychology trading books, read anything on trading. That's how you're going to grow. Okay. Learn. Watch videos. There's so many videos to watch. I still watch videos. Every single day I watch videos. I've been watching some of Paul's videos to see what he's doing. Follow people that are really successful. Paul's killing it. And he's killing it. So I want to know what Paul's doing. I want to see if I can pick up a nugget from Paul. Um, and I have picked up a nugget from his videos. Okay. So watch videos that the company um, puts out there so you can continue to 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 uh, learn and then practice back test back testing has been huge for me it's 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 like being in a batting cage you know you can't just play it's like being a baseball player you can't just play in a game 
and not think you in in, in the not think you can practice and be good. You got to go to the batting cages. You got to you know take fielding, uh, shag fly balls or or shag grounders. But you gotta you gotta keep you gotta keep uh, uh, you gotta keep uh, practicing by doing bat testing. It's been it's it's absolutely made me the trader I am for bat testing. You just see the indicators over and over and over and over again. So hope this webinar helped for you guys. Um, I'm, I think Paul recorded it probably. And uh, sorry we couldn't take a trade, but again, um, I'm not going to trade a trade, just to trade, take it. So everyone have a good day. Have a great 4th of July and uh, see you in a month.